So Rome River, he was like the Tampa St. Petersburg, Florida. We come in week in, week out to prophesy the downfall of America and to bring our people back to the natural nationalities, which is Latinos, Negroes, and American people that consist of 12 tribes of Israel, that consist of 12 tribes of Israel. Without further ado, like to give all glory on the unto you. How by Shem, you have a shy by Shem, a cock of gosh. Double honor to the elders that teach this truth. Salutation, brother, for this truth on the four winds of the earth. Also, the sisters of Christ will meet this confusion of faces and children. Shalom. 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 All through the spirit of fire, you have by Shem, you have a shy by Shem, a cock of gosh, by the five. Can you please give me second Ezra chapter five, verse one, and just hold that for me really quick? <clears throat> all right, it says World War Three is ramping up. The Bible is speaking occupied in prophecy. All right, so what's going on over in the Middle East? That's biblical prophecy. There are many prophecies throughout the Bible, but today we're gonna we're gonna particularly talking about what's going on over in the Middle East. All right, because there's history behind what's going on. And a lot of uh, majority of Americans really don't know what the hell is going on. All they see is a new trend. You know, like when Ukraine got attacked, everybody's putting up Ukraine flag, Ukraine relief. Now that Israel has been attacked by Hamas, how often do you think you're going to hit and talk about Zelensky and Ukraine? All they're going to do is abandon Ukraine the same way um, America abandoned Afghanistan after 20 years. All right? The same thing they're going to do. Shalom, shalom. Y'all about Shimei Awashai, about Shimei Kakadash, right? That's you, brother, from across the border. All right. But before we get into that, we, we, we want to talk about those uh, those earthquakes that occur in diverse places, because that's a biblical prophecy as well. So not only what's going on in the Middle East is biblical prophecy, also those three earthquakes that hit the same day on three different continents are also biblical prophecy. OK. And right here it shows. Right. It says 120 people killed, 120 killed as earthquake hits three continents. Right, that's biblical prophecy. Go ahead, huh? The second edge is five and one. Nevertheless, as I coming like like the tokens, behold, the day shall come that which dwell upon the earth shall be taken in great numbers. Right. A day shall come that dwell upon the earth, they shall be taken in great numbers. So this is nothing compared to <clears throat> the slain of the Lord being many. Being taken in great numbers is like the flood. Well, billions die, not compared to thousands that die in an earthquake. <clears throat> And the way of the truth shall be hidden. And the way of the truth shall be hidden, right? But it's here to you openly. Go ahead. And the land shall be buried, shall be barren of faith. And the land shall be barren of faith. Because people really don't know what's gonna go on, right? In the near future. So they really don't know what to put there, their trust, worship, confidence, rather than their man. You know, like the scripture says, vain is the help of man. But we get we get our faith from the Lord, which is why we know what's going on in the Middle East. We know that the Lord is doing that because the elders were talking about that for years, let alone what happened in 1948. It's proof. Okay. But yes. iniquity shall be increased above that which now thou seest, for that thou hast heard long ago. Right. So iniquity shall be increased as before and as long ago. Are you give me second age 91? So, so right now we live in a time where the Lord said that he would turn upon earth, shall he find faith on earth. Well, you see the faith through the men of the Lord because going to the elders of Great Millstone, they're a prime example of faith. All right? Now, when you look at somebody who's a multi-millionaire, they have faith in everything they did. All right? When you think about people who, who are very successful in life, what they do, they cut out all the time they have for leisure. They don't have a lot of leisure. Their time, they, their mind is occupied in their practice. That what that what sets them apart from everybody else, right? So that's why you don't have everyone being millionaires, billionaires. Rather than them paying, rather than you paying them, they're paying you. So like when the scripture says, faith is um evidence of things hoped for, uh, um such a thing hoped for, evidence of things not seen. The next verse it says, by it the elders have a good report. So the elders of Great Mills don't have a good report because they always be occupied in prophecy. Right? So go ahead, Al. It's the second edge is nine and one. Nine and one. Second edge is nine and one. He answered me, then said, measure thou time diligently itself. And when thou seest part of the read it again, mm -hmm. Bible child. 
That's your daughter time. The second edge is nine and one. He answered me, then said, Measure thou time diligently itself, and when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before. Right. It says, Measure thou the times diligently in itself. Right. See, we're not on man's time. We're on Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai's time. Right. So when the Lord said, Measure thou the time, you measure the time by the prophecies. All right. You measure the time by the prophecies. So, like going back to John of Revelation, John of Revelator on Revelation, the 13th chapter, John of Revelator, he didn't know what the, the, the mark of the beast was. He didn't know what that was during that time. But then when you go 2,000 years, uh, when you go 2,000 years ahead in time, what do you get? You get people walking around with chips in their right hand and in their forehead. Right? That's what you get got going on. That's how you measure the time diligently in the soul. Okay? Yeah. Second Exodus 9 and 2, then shall thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the hearts will begin to visit the world which he made. Right, go ahead. Verse 3, therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world. When there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world. So what happened? So you had the earthquakes that occurred in three different places in the earth. All right. So you see right here, there was a 6.3 earthquake that hit Afghanistan October 7th on the morning. Separate strong earthquakes hit three countries of Asia, Oceania, and Central America on Saturday and Friday night. So within the span of 24 hours, there was three earthquakes on three different continents. So that goes back to earthquakes in diverse places. All right. That was a prime example right there. Now, going back into the Palestinian war, what's going on with Hamas, the Israel-Palestine war is Washington's fault. This is an article right here from RT, right? In the U.S. condemnation, before I get that, I want you to get this from me. Get this from me. Give me uh, Matthew 24, 6 and 8. Just hold that on that really quick. Hold that on that. In the U.S., condemnation of the attack was unanimous and bipartisan. They're not talking about the attack of uh, Hamas that happened over in Israel. As elected officials expressed their outrage at the loss of Israeli life. However, in all of these statements, that a single one recognized their own government's role in the attack. So this is going back to 1948, which a lot of these people don't even know what the hell is going on over there in the Middle East. All they see is Israel get attacked. They read the CNN propaganda, the Fox propaganda, and then everybody get on their Twitter feed, everybody get on their Facebook feed, oh, save Israel, the same way they did with save Ukraine. All right, a lot of you people, man, you're just sheeple. All you do is you follow the Judas goat into stupidity or into death itself. You really don't know what's going on in the world, right? Rather than what's going on in your own local community, you have no clue what's going on in the world, right? So going back, Washington, along with most of the collective West, has been imposing sanctions on the Palestinian Authority for nearly 17 years. The peace process between Israelis and Palestinians aimed at reaching a two-state solution whereby Israel and Palestine would exist side by side as independent, mutually recognized states has been effectively dead for around two decades with the last failed attempt to pressure the Israeli government to negotiate coming under former U.S. President Barack Obama. So this has been going on for like two decades. And Israel, see when Israel bombs um, Palestine in the Gaza Strip, right? In the papers it says Israel defended itself. But then let's say that the Palestinians retaliate with pouring rocks or something. They'll say, oh, Israel's being attacked. John Mayer said it the best, man. I love John Mayer's music. He said, he said when they control the... Um, when they control the information, they can bend it all they want. And you people are just gobble it up, man, right? You're, you're so gullible. That's why Henry Kissinger, not Henry Kissinger, the, the elite called the masses of the people, he called them the useless eaters. Because you don't believe anything they tell you. I mean, anything they'll tell you, right? They go on to Matthew 24 and 6. This is Matthew 24 and 6. And you shall hear of war and rumors of war. See that be not troubled. 
for all these things must come to pass for the end is not yet so you shall have wars and rumors of wars but be not trouble so all these things are going to come to pass right because there has to be a stage to where they're going to try forcibly implement the MOTB on everyone but thermonuclear war is not going to happen just yet because remember it's going to be absolute anarchy in all the streets it's going to be like no day that's ever been on earth we ain't reached it yet but you can see what's going on here everyday news feed man hey, a lot of killing it's a lot of murder man. it's a lot of robbery it's a lot of it's a lot of um fabrication it's a lot it's a lot of that going on it's nothing new that's what america's been baked built on come on i mean we built off of slavery so what do you expect for the, the post portum of it to be what you see right now and no other nation will uh, trust america anymore okay yeah, keep going. Matthew 24 and 7, for nation shall rise against nation. But the nation shall rise against nation. Because you even had turkeys telling America, listen, you don't need to be breaking no warships over there. Because what you're going to do, you're going to call attention with us as well. And Turkey was also a member of NATO. So now you have your own allies hating the world, which rise upon the beast in the book of Revelation. So now even your allies getting fed up with you. And, um, What's his name? Khabib. Khabib. Um, but the UFC champion, well, the former of UFC um, champion that beat Conor McGregor, he even put it up on Palestine. He even put it up. He um, put the Palestine flag up and everything because he's Muslim as well. Because he he actually know the history of what's going on around him. Because the Palestinians was inhabiting that land way prior to 1948. Okay. But going back, he read you know, the next verse. Again, kingdom against this. kingdom, and there shall be famine. Pestilence and earthquakes and diverse places. Verse 8. All these things are the beginning of our sorrows. So all these things are the beginning of sorrows. You have to put two and five. Hold that on deck, though. Now, going back into the article, unlike other global powers such as Russia and China, the U.S. never entertained the idea of giving Hamas the chance to govern as Carver has suggested. So this is, this is going back. Instead, Every American government has refused to engage with Hamas, deeming it a terrorist organization, but then ignoring the Palestinian political party completely and not formulating any solution to the situation that has been ongoing inside Gaza. Now, they deem Hamas to be a terrorist group, but then let's date way back to 9 11, because there are so many videos and much evidence out there of the Taliban, Al Qaeda. ISIS and ISIL all being backed and funded by America. Because there's actually videos of American vehicles over there in the Middle East with American license plates on them, man. There's actually videos of America giving funds to ISIL and ISIS to help with proxy wars against other neighboring countries that was trying to get. Remember when Assad had asked Russia, had asked people to help him? Because what happened was the West was going on a war in the Middle East. That was taking everything. So when they tried to get Syria, that's when Assad had contacted Russia, and then from then on out, oh, Russia gate, Russia this, Russia that. Then they deem Russia to be an enemy. So that just goes to show you, man, that everywhere they go, man, all they do is bring death and destruction. So how are you going to say that Hamas was a terrorist group when they always want to come to the, to the political table to try to come to some solution on how they can live there, how, how they can cohabitate together, but all you're going to do is deem them as terrorists whenever they want to defend themselves. That's exactly what America do. They'll throw a rock, and then if you throw one back, they say, oh, man, you over here starting the war. You starting the fight. You don't want to get everybody else involved. Okay? Going back. In fact, the U.S. government considers every single major Palestinian political party or movement as a terrorist organization, other than the mainstream branch of Fatah that partially controls the West Bank. So that's why that just goes to show you that if you're not with America, then they're going to deem you to be an enemy. But even Turkey's telling you, yo, yo, you shouldn't bring warships over here. And Turkey's supposed to be your ally. Right? And you got to remember, because in, in, in the news feeds, they're claiming that Hamas is an Iranian militant group. And Israel has been beefing about Iran having nuclear capabilities over there by constantly enriching uranium. Because they have nuclear capabilities too. And Iran, Iran, they're gonna they're gonna nuke Israel. They're gonna do it because it's written in the scriptures and they don't care anymore. Even Russia, even Russia said the West, he said it will be desolate. That's in the Russian media because you don't read it, don't mean it's not real. So all the other countries saying, yo, America, you're not the only big guy on the block with a gun. 
all the other countries are saying that they have the same capabilities too. And now you're losing your grip on the world stage, right? Shalom, shalom, let me fight. Yahweh, shalom, 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 The world already seen how America did a poor, terrible job in Afghanistan. Billions of dollars in Afghanistan flushed down the drain, but your own people in America are suffering. And y'all look at us like we got a problem, like we're the issue. No, you people are just idiots. We can't help you with that. That's why we, we that's why we, the Lord had to put the spirit us to come out here to tell you what's going on. So that when when it does hit the fan, you can't say you didn't know. You know, but ignorance is bliss. So. This is how cool to imply that also because he transgresses by wine, he is a proud man. Also, because he transgresses by wine, he is a proud man. And that goes back to 17 years of putting sanctions on Palestine. Because that wine is his philosophy. All right, it goes back to um his political documents. Remember, it says, um, woe, woe to him that devises iniquity upon his bed because it's in the powers of his hand. You know, he think upon it at night. So what so what it's talking about is that they co they come up with different ideas, they come up with different with different um laws, different statutes, they constantly alter the way you live and the way you think. Oh, we don't like the fact that you're shaking hands with that political leader. We're gonna put sanctions on you. And sanctions are acts of war. Because what you're doing, you're cutting the bloodline of a, of a country according to its economics. Every country has a GDP. So if you cut a country's um, economic um, economic um, line, the, the people who make a lot of money, the rich, the politicians, they're not going to suffer. The everyday people of that country is going to suffer. So sanctions on other countries, you're harming the, the everyday people, man. So sanctions are also acts of war, too. Yeah, you know. He is a keeper at home who enlarges his desire as hell. He said he's a keeper at home. Let's talk about America. This is an article right here, February 14, 2023. The U.S. has 750 overseas military bases and continuing to build more to encircle China. He needs to keep it at home. That's a prime example right there. And that's the same thing with in the Romans. The Romans stretched themselves too thin, and that's what got invaded. Because if you're not if you're not protecting home base, then you can easily be invaded because you're sending all your soldiers out, you know, all across the world. You're scattering. So so now your 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 bands, the battalions aren't as strong. It's kind of like having five fingers, and they're separated. They're weak, but when you bring the five fingers together, the fists make them stronger. So America stretches out their military too thin, man. So America's wide open. That's why Russia wasn't, that's why Russia didn't mind making that statement about making on the West desolate. Because America has never uh, incorporated or should I say invested most of its military money into a missile defense system. Because their pride let them think they'll never get bombed. But now they even said it. They they failed numerous times trying to um trying to take out you use like SAM rats or, or like um ground to air. Missile defense system. They said they failed many times. So how are you going to stop a hypersonic missile that you can't even guide on your radar? You can't even find on your radar. All right, they got the Satan too. Russia has the Satan too, and and China has the Dong Thing. I think Dong Thing Five or something like that. So they got hypersonic missiles that you can't even see, and and they just itching and scratching. And then also Russia has the Dead Man Switch. So if, if from any in any part of the world where they sense a missile was coming towards them. Even if everybody in Russia was unconscious, the dead man would send all the missiles in that same direction. So they're telling you, don't try them. Psalms 140 and 1, deliver me, O Lord, from the evil man. Preserve me from the violent man. Exactly. Everywhere this man go, he's bringing nothing but violence, man. Right? They're talking about, remember when Gamar had got, um, what's the name? Um, Gamar, got Hafi, got Hafi. You had the Gahafi, you also had the other political leader in Sudan and over there in Egypt. They said they was over there using chemical weapons against their people and they were doing terrorist acts and everything. Every country in America went to quote unquote help. They're in the worst state after than they were prior. Come on, man, stop playing. Psalms 140 and 2, which imagine mischiefs in their heart. Continually are they gathered together for war. That's in the scriptures, continually. They always come together. Only for war, man. That's all they ever want. 
because it's, it's going to constantly be there's never it's never been a time since mankind that one kingdom has always been on top always america's on a decline like every other great kingdom you can go into all the other great king america is a great kingdom but now it's on a decline all right no one's flocking to come to America to want to live to make a better life. They they come in and make money and send it back home. <laughs> That's why there's so much inflation. They're not investing in America. They're sending their money back home, man. Right? The land of opportunity, right? Psalms 140 and 3. They have sharpened their tongues like a serpent. Otter's poison is under their lips. Right? Because their words are, hey, what it says, the words in his mouth was smooth as butter, but he had war in his heart. That's so why the Lord say, never trust thy enemy. Never. All right? Verse 4, keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Preserve me from the violent man who have proposed to overthrow my goings. Fact, man. And they're always trying to lay a stumbling block before you. Always. They're always trying. They're constantly trying, especially with the, when it says the wicked, it says the righteous and poor, the poor. They're constantly trying to increase that distance between the poor and between the righteous, man. Always trying to increase that that distance. That's why so many mama. That's why so many mama pop stores had to shut down because because when they had when they when they had the COVID nineteen, they told you that you couldn't go to you couldn't go make an honest living. So they made you more dependent on the government, man. They don't care about the poor. The Roman Gabar dropped Proverbs four and sixteen. For they sleep not except they have done mischief. Exactly, and their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. Exactly. Shalom. But going back, the U.S. has 750 overseas military bases and continues to build more to encircle China. That's the violent man. You will see China. Imagine if China had one military base in Canada. Oh, my God. America, EU, and NATO will be in an uproar. But they got 700. This is this, is this year. February 14, 2023. 750 bases overseas, man. Really? So who's really the bully on the block? Can you read that one more time, Bubba Kishore? Habakkuk 2 and 5, yea, also because he transgresses by wine, he is a proud man, neither keep it at home, who enlarges his desire as hell, and it is as death, and cannot be sa sa satisfied. satisfied, but gathered unto him all nations, and keep it unto all people. Right, so he gathered to him all nations and he was unto him all people. There you go out the of the spirit, man. Because going back to uh Henry Kissinger, what is Saudi Arabia said, give me all your gold, we give you these dollars. Whenever you want your gold back, you can come and trade them out with your dollars. So when Saudi Arabia tried to get their gold back, that's when they killed the um the gold standard in the 70s. So then they made all nations. Now you good, man. You saw it, bro. Now you good, bro. So what are you talking about? You good. We talking about what's going on over there in the Middle East standard side. Yeah, but we're talking about what's going on in the Middle East and biblical prophecy. And that's the reason why all those all the wars are happening over there right now. Because the Lord is coming back to redeem his land. And the people that's over there, they were put there by man. The Lord said he's going to put his people there. A lot of it will be biblical prophecy have been coming through. Right, right. Like several years. It's been going on. Well, going back to 1948 when they made the, the, um, the state of Israel. That goes back to them taking the land from the Palestinians. And they've been warring since then. But a lot of people... In modern times over here in America, they don't really know what's going on because there's so many distractions. But this war goes back decades, you know. Yeah. So it's what's been going on for 40 years? Exactly. Yeah. Around that time. Okay. So you so you have some you have some some acumen of what's going on. Well, I've known right, for right. a while. I've known that whenever a big news story comes out about something, I'm not going to try to hide something. Yeah, well, the thing down is, down when, it, when, it, when they started coming up with terms yeah, I'm down like here now. Um, I'm ready to walk in right now. they started to say um, fake speech, you know, fake news, whatever. Good. It goes back to a quote I heard from one of the, I think it was the Rob Tyler Rockefeller. It said the internet was the worst thing they could have ever created. Because it's always pros and cons to everything. Because now you have opportunity to get the truth rather than it always being propagated. Yeah. Going back to Pearl Harbor, they had three days of knowing the Kamikaze attack was happening. But they needed a reason to go to war. Back in, the, back in the people were wiser. The people were wiser. That's why I want you to stand over here. That's what I'm here, you But uh, we're talking about you good though, man. But uh, at, at the end of the day, you gotta you gotta come to the realization. If it's not making the money, why are they doing it? Remember that, all right? All right, man. Hey, take care, brother. Be safe. Yep. Going back. Wow. 
somebody that wow and he's young too somebody that know what's going on okay that's that's lovely that's lovely oh you can get me on joel three and two once again you got to follow follow the paper trail man and it'll take you right to where you want to go follow the paper trail my guy yep because the love of the love of money used to be all evil follow the paper trail why are they over there helping them why they really want to go help them? it's a reason why they want to go help ukraine 30 percent of the world weeks over there and Russia get that, man, they can go to war for a very long time. You can't feed your soldiers if you don't have ammunition. If you don't have fuel, you can't go to war. So that was a very smart move by Russia to invade Ukraine, okay? Because they know we have more wheat. I will also gather all nations, and I will bring them down into the valley. Joseph and I will plead with them, therefore, my people and for my heritage, Israel. Right, for my people, for my heritage, Israel. He said he's going to gather all nations down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. Now, when you go into the word Jehoshaphat, the word Jehoshaphat going to the word Yahweh Shapat. Yahweh rule. So, when you're looking at what's going on in Israel, if you go, you got to go into an ancient map. Look up the word Jehoshaphat. On the ancient map, it will show you right there where Jordan is. Yemen, where Israel is, where all Syria, all in that region, they call that the Levant. Go online, look up the Levant. That whole area is known as the Levant. So in that area, it's called the Valley of Jehoshaphat. All nations, are, all nations right now are looking at Israel. See, Ukraine was never the premises of the Lord coming back. All right, all that was was just um the Lord's putting the hooks back in the jaws, going back to the bear in the book of Ezekiel, and going back to the USSR ways. The Cold War is now becoming a hot war. It's not a Cold War anymore, right? So what's going on? So what's going on with Russia, Iran, China, um, India, Saudi Arabia, Israel, Turkey, and it's all nations right now are looking at Israel. Even even Turkey or Dogen has something to say about it. So this is a grand scale move. Ukraine is nothing compared to what's happening in Israel right now because. Ukraine, not Ukraine, Israel, what they call it? Yeah, Israel like a welfare state. They constantly get billions of dollars from America. But they constantly get billions, they constantly get new weaponry, they get everything, right? So that just goes to show you that this is completely different from what happened in Ukraine. They only want to gain the grounds in Ukraine, but Israel has always been the ally for America. That's why in the scripture it says, the least of the flock shall draw them out. The least of the flock of uh, 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 the goats of Esau is going to draw out America. All right? Go ahead. And will plead with them, therefore, my people, and for my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. Right. He said he said he's going to plead for his people, his heritage, Israel, who they scattered and they parted my land. Right there in the scripture, it says they parted my land. Why do you think the Palestinians and those small has a fight? The Lord been said they parted his land. Going back to 1948, the Bafla Declaration. Palestine for Jews, right here. The Bafla Declaration. You people gotta read. You people gotta read, man. All these smartphones, all these idiots, man. You gotta read, bro. Palestine for the Jews. A official sympathy. Mr. Bafla has sent the following letter to Lord Rothschild. In regard to the establishment of a national home in Palestine for the Jewish people. So this is a letter from Bafla being written to Lord Rothschild. All right. You know who the Rothschilds and Rockefellers are, right? Okay, then. Say no more. I have much pleasure in conveying to you, on behalf of His Majesty's government, the following declaration of sympathy with Jewish Zionist aspirations, which has been submitted to and approved by the cabinet. His Majesty's government view with favor the establishment in Palestine of a national home for the Jewish people, reading in verbatim, all right, and will use their best endeavors to facilitate the achievement of this object, it being clearly understood that nothing shall be done which may prejudice the civil and religious rights of existing non-Jewish communities in Palestine. This is a letter from Baffler that he's writing to Lord Rothschild before the Jewish state in 1947. 
All right, Shalom, Yahweh, Shalom, 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 this is a letter from Balfour. All right, listen here. Listen to what it said again. It being clearly understood that nothing shall be done which may prejudice the civil and religious rights of existing non Jewish communities in Palestine. They're not doing that when they're dropping bombs on them, they're not doing that. Or the rights and political status enjoyed by Jews in any other country. It should be grateful if you will bring this declaration to the knowledge of the Zionist Federation. So now you see why they're constantly fighting and beefing over there. Because what it is, you, you separated them from the land. You gave them a certain portion for, of the land from 1948 up until now, and you just constantly keep taking territory. You constantly keep taking territory from them, man. And then when they finally retaliate, now it's, oh, all of a sudden, everybody's up in up in arms with, with, with Hamas all of a sudden. Good. I want you to get this for me. No, 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 Zechariah 9 and 6. Zechariah 9 and 6. Because in Joel 3 and 2, it said that you scattered my people and it said that you parted their land. So when you parted the land, that's why you have the Gaza Strip, you have the West Bank, and that's why you have what, what you call today known as Israel, Palestine and Israel, okay? Zechariah um, 9 and 6. Zechariah 9 and 6. And a bastard shall dwell in Azad, in Azad and I will cut off the pride of the Philistine. Right. The Lord said, he said, a bastard shall live in Ashdod. And he will cut off the pride of the Philistines. We go back to the Palestinians in the Philistine that goes back to the Canaanites, right? Because it was known as the land of Canaan before it was also known as the land of Israel today. And really, if you want to go into a geographical um, terminology, it's also known as the Fertile Crescent. It's supposed to be the most fertile land on earth, i.e. the land of milk and honey. I mean, but you got to do a little research to know that. Nonetheless, though, right now they're part of that land. That's biblical prophecy. The Lord said a bastard lives in Ashdod. You're going to the word bastard. People today know that to be what? A fatherless child, right? But when you actually go into the etymology of the word bastard, it means fraudulent. So the Lord said, a fraud is living in my land. Ashdod is the fifth largest um, city in Israel right now. So, that, so they know that they was put there by that baffle of declaration written in Lord Rothschild. That's not biblical prophecy to write um, documentation indicating you are the Lord's people. The Lord said he's going to put his people in that land. So that's why there's never be peace over there in that land. Because Gamal Abdel Nasir, the second prince, of, not the second prince, the second president of Egypt, he said this. This is an actual quote from him. This is from Times Magazine. Well, 1952, if I'm not mistaken, this is from Gamal Abdel Nasir, who was actually the president. He said, he was asked about peace in the Middle East. The late president of Egypt, Gamal Abdel Nasir, stated, this is his quote, quote, the Jews will never be able to live here in peace because they left here black but came back white, unquote. That was the second president of Egypt said in 1952. So that was four years, four or five years after the Jewish state was established. So he, he so he already knew whoever's living over here in these lands, you'll never have peace because you left black and came back white. But I guess everybody's saying that we just trying to take their heritage. The world know who we are. Y'all just been told a lie your whole life. But it's okay. You should be upset with your government and your education system for dumbing you down. That's your problem. Take it up with them, not with us. So the world know who we were. Same thing um, in Time Magazine with, with Adolf Hitler. Adolf Schickergruber is his real name. He said, America has, has God's jewels. When you go into Malachi, the third chapter, he said he will make up his jewels. All right, the Lord said, um, um, a man shall be tried like fine gold. An acceptable man shall be tried like fine gold in the fire of adversity. Right. So we're the jewels. But once again, the world, no man, it's just here in America, man. Man, you just, you just, these people are just sottish, bro. They don't really know nothing, man. It's crazy. You know, it's to the point where in America they're arguing and bickering over pronouns, where people over in the Middle East. Are literally trying to fight every day just to survive. Like 
because of political wars based upon oh uh, it's really holy wars going on y'all over here arguing and bickering and crying about pronouns and junk what what do you branch to the table what what are y'all arguing about you know what i'm saying so nobody war hate america it's a bunch of a, it's a bunch of grown adults man it's a bunch of grown adults over here and they're so selfish they don't even think about the kids everybody think of you have so many adults that are so selfish. That's why the children don't respect adults because the, the adults haven't even matured mentally. Everybody maturing physically, but they're not maturing mentally. So you got children raising children, raising children, raising children. And look at the result. You got a president saying you can grab a woman by her pussy. That's the world we live in, y'all. You know, that's why the world laugh at, laugh at America. But going back to what Gamal Abdel Nasir said. <coughs> It says the Jews will never be able to live here in peace because they left here black, came back white. All right. Hold on, you like how about she now shy about showing for that, man. Give me Isaiah 14, verse 1 through 2. So going back to the whole Jewish state and what's going on over there in Israel, the reason why that's happening, because the Lord's people are not back in their place, man. The Lord said that. The Lord said when we were going, the Lord said when we were gonna go back into the land. Wait, hold on. The Lord said that you're going to have the 12 pillars for the 12 tribes of Israel, each one having their own stone. You're going to have the 12 thrones that the 12 disciples are going to sit on going back to Matthew, the 19th chapter. You're going to have the 12, the 12, 24 holy elders that's constantly praising the Lord that cast their crowns down to his throne. We're supposed to see the heavens descend. We're supposed to see Abraham. We're supposed to see King David. The Lord said when his people go back to the land, all that was supposed to happen. They still fighting over there. <laughs> so they're going to show you, man. They made the Lord's people. But y'all eat it up anyhow. It's all good. But, hey, the, the Bible going to speak. The Bible going to speak, man. The Bible going to speak. Go ahead, Al. Isaiah 14 and 1, right? Yeah, Isaiah 14 and 1. Isaiah 14 and 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel. So the Lord will have mercy upon Jacob. And yet choose Israel right? and set them in their own land and set them in their own land. So the Lord said he was going to set his people into their own land. All right. So and that goes to show you that it's crazy, man. It's beautiful at the same time. The Lord said you were going to scatter my people and part my land. But then the Lord goes on to say that I'm going to put my people in their land. So for you to do that, the Lord put the spirit in you to go over there and to take our land. So remember, the scripture even says it, another shall surname himself Jacob. Well, Israel's name was Jacob before he wrestled with the angel. After he wrestled with the angel, his name would change from Jacob to Israel. No, you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. No, you're good. You're good. You're good. And this is this is public. Sorry, well, we don't own this. We don't own this. <laughs> yeah, so so Israel, so Jacob's name would change to Israel. So when it says another shall surname themselves Jacob, actually, yeah, yeah move, yeah, move your um Bible Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So to this day, you notice, you notice they call themselves Israeli, which Israeli means you're an inhabitant of Israel. But to say you're an Israelite is to say you're a descendant from the lineage of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So they'll never call themselves Israelites, right? They never will. They'll say they're from um the tribe of Levi or the tribe of Judah. They'll say that. Right, but then what about Naphtali? What about Reuben? What about Issachar? What about Simeon? There are 12 tribes, they only talk about the three. The three that were left over, they talk about Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. But there's 12 tribes. So, like when they say that they're the Lord's people, okay, where are where are the other 12 tribes? And where are the 12 pillars? Right? So, anyhow, keep going up. And the stranger shall be joined with them, and the stranger shall be joined with them. It goes back to the Israelite foreigners. The stranger shall be joined with them. Go ahead. And shall cleave into their house of Jacob. It shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Go ahead. Okay, verse 2. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in their land of the Lord servants. Right. And the Lord and, and they shall possess them in the land of the Lord as servants. So the, the scripture says, those who oppress them shall make them servants in the land. Well, last time I checked, when they was put into the on um, the state of Israel, right? I mean, I don't remember them bringing any German soldiers over there to make them remember the Germans oppressed them, right? In the Holocaust, 
Well, how come they didn't bring those German soldiers over there in the land and impress them? The Lord said you would do that. The handmaids. And handmaids, sir. Thank you. They didn't do that. Okay? That was the prime example. So that prophecy wasn't fulfilled, but they're still over there. And they shall take them captive, whose captive they were. And they shall take them captives, whose captive they were. They haven't taken anyone captive. Go ahead. And rule over their oppressors. They shall rule over their oppressors. They're not. <laughs> so it's, so that goes back to us. Us being the oppressed. Us being the captives. It's funny when I said, oh, you're free. Like the scripture said, they are the head, and we are the tail right now. Right. So we got to get it back, but we are the head, they're going to be the tail. Right. We're talking about cap. cap. It's crazy, bro. These people are out of their freaking minds. They'll say, um, they seek a salvation. What do you need salvation for? This is your kingdom, right? Like, you talking about who? You talking about being saved? That's like somebody kidnapping you. What happened with Lot? When Lot got kidnapped, when they took over the land, Abraham and his servants went and got Lot. We were put into slavery. Nobody came and got us yet. So who is it talking about need salvation now? Well, it's funny to me. I laugh at these people because it's a very beautiful thing when you read the scriptures, man. What you need? What, what, we, we, go ahead. Okay, what you need to be delivered from, man? Right. What do you need to be delivered? The from? Lord, the soul, the Lord, son of us, son of point. Your name. Yeah. Shall I will send you for your enemies for all wants and needs. Yeah. The Lord said, "I will send you into the, your enemy for one of all things." You know. The thing is, though, is that just because you didn't get a piece of the pie, doesn't mean that that you need salvation as well. Your own people cut you out. You know, if you're gonna have a if you're gonna have a righteous kingdom like King Solomon, the King Solomon's ruling that were 40 peace, there were 40 um years of peace on earth. But man has always been at war ever since then, right? So what do you really need salvation for? This is your kingdom. You know what I'm saying? God bless America, the few, the proud, the marines, you know. You know, we know these what they say, um, these colors never run, and yeah, this is your kingdom. Live it, live up to it. You're not, gonna, you're not gonna be ruling in the kingdom of heaven. This is it for you, man. Like every other kingdom on earth, this is your heaven right here. Our kingdom is gonna come soon. What do you need salvation for? You got everything. You got the world. You want it out of space and all of that. You want to go to Mars? The Lord said that. The Lord said. The Lord said you will set your nest amongst the stars. Never in the history of mankind has anybody ever been to the moon and back, other than these times we're living in. And who did it? Whether you say you're American or Russian, the so-called white man, the Edomite man, I gotta stop playing. <laughs> these everyday people don't really know. I'm not concerned with them, but these elites, they know, man. We know who you are, like you know who we are. You know, I can't help it that a lot of people in America are just sottish and they have poor diets that they can't even think of proper function properly. Most people can't even function properly without having a cigarette, bro. Like that's the world we live in. Oh, you need a cigarette, man. I'm getting antsy. What? Oh, you know what I'm saying? You're getting hangry, man. You're going to get hungry. You're getting mad. I'm like, bro, you haven't eaten in like six hours. Think about somebody who ain't eating in two days. What are you talking about? You mad. You feel crazy, man. Anyways, can okay, you please give me um, Isaiah 2 and 1? Isaiah 2 and 1? Right. No, you have 14. Isaiah 2 and 1. You just said Isaiah. So, man. It's yeah. Isaiah 2 and 1. Right. The word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. Right. And shall it come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord house shall be established? He said, in the last days, the mountain of the Lord house shall be established. It be established right now. But how shall I lay the foundation? The Lord said, with spiritual stones going to, um, what is the first Peter, the second chapter? That goes back to the third temple, the third temple being built. Remember, Vocab alone, they're not building the third temple over there. Because even the Lord said, the Lord said, um, the Lord said, what do you say? He said, You are, he said, You are my building, you are my husband. The Lord said he will dwell, he will dwell within um, the nation of Israel. All right? When it, remember what it says, the heavenly father's the head, your house shines our head. Then the man is the head of the woman going into the um the order, right? Yeah. On the top of the mountains, and shall be exalted above the hills. Yeah, when you go into mountains and hills, that goes into nations. A mountain will be a big nation, like China and Russia. A hill will be like a small nation, like say Pakistan or something like that, you know. 
feel what I'm saying? So that would be a, a mountain in the hill. Also, the G20 summit. What 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 happens at the G20 summit? The top 20 leaders of the world come together to try to come to to some kind of, some kind of resolve or resolution. I was I ain't know if I want to say resolve or resolution. I was trying to find the words. Where the top 20 leaders of the world come together to find a resolution about global affairs. That's the G20 summit. What is a summit? That's the peak of a mountain. So that would be the people at the top of the nations. So that's biblical. That's biblical prophecy. When it says it shall exalt above the mountains and the hills, it's talking about nations, man. Big nations and small nations. Super. I think was that a WRX? I'm sorry. Go ahead, up. And nations shall flow into it. Right, and nations shall flow into it. They're not flowing to Israel right now. I mean, for the war, yeah, but not going for the reason why it's going to say after. Go ahead, up. Verse 3. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up into the mountains of the Lord, to the house of God from Jacob, and he will teach us the, his ways and will walk in his path, while Zion shall go forth the law. That's heavy. Oh, wait a minute, 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 wait a minute. It says, and many people shall go and say, Come ye and let us go to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us of his ways. Ain't nobody flocking over to learn the ways because they're not teaching the ways, man. That's how you know, man, that's a biblical prophecy. It's not being fulfilled. They're not flocking because during that day, because it says the light. So like, finish it up. I got excited. And we'll walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law mm -hmm. and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And the word of the Lord. So hold on, check this out. Huh? If they were the people of the Lord, the small hats in the land right now, why are we out here telling people to repent? <laughs> right. <laughs> if that's the case, if, if everybody's going to be flocking to Israel right now, according to prophecy, why are we still out here? Why are we still warned? Right, those are not his people. Why are we still warned? Right? Yeah, come on, man, stop it. You know? It's still famines in the world. It's still pestilence in the world. The Lord said he's gonna wipe away y'all tears. People still crying in the world. Right? It's all it's hell throughout the world. The earth being polluted by the inhabitants there in all because they don't keep the law. That's why, that's why your house said, saying, except those days be shortened for the elect's sake, no flesh shall be saved. Because at this rate that man's going, won't no flesh be saved, man. From the pollution, from the foods you eat. And the medication that they put you on, they don't cure you. They just only they treat you. They don't never cure you. Because then, then again, it won't be a billion dollar industry, right? No way they can make billions of dollars if they heal you, if they cure you, right? Man, come on, man. He going out. And he shall sure. judge among the nations and, sh and shall rebuke many people. He shall judge among the nation and rebuke many people. And right? they shall beat their swords. And plowshares and their spears and the pruning hooks. So they're gonna be their swords and the plowshares and their and their spears and the pruning hooks. So in other words, that's a that's that's a parable saying you're not gonna war anymore. So your sword's gonna be a plowshare for the field, and your pruning hook and, and your um your spear gonna be a pruning hook to cut the grass. So in other words, you're gonna become shepherds, not warriors anymore. It's still warm over there. I see the video of an Israeli soldier with a gun in his hand running like this. What are you guys talking about? What prophecy is that that has been fulfilled, man? Yeah, like we crazy. Go ahead. And nations shall lift up swords against nation. And nations shall lift up shall not lift up sword against nation. Go ahead. And shall they learn war and not anymore? And they shall not learn war anymore. They're still warning the land, right? So that's a prime example right there on how can they be the Lord's people when they're still warning the land right to this day. All right. So with that being said, uh, we're gonna go right into um prophecy. Um, so right 39 to 1 concerning those Israelites saying that we're obsessed with the MOTV. Of course, we're obsessed with the Bible. We're, that's the spirit of the Lord. It's prophecy. Of course, we're obsessed with it, man. Just like you have you got people that's obsessed with cigarettes, people that's obsessed with sports, people that's obsessed with fashion, have obsession with vehicles. We have an obsession with, with um, prophecy, right? Because the prophecy is a sure sign, because there's no greater power on earth. Than indicating or being clairvoyant of what's to happen. Okay, what's being clairvoyant of what's to happen, meaning that you can predict the future. If you can predict the future, hell, anybody can be a millionaire. If that's the case, but only Lord has that power. So prophecy is strong, man. 
That's what that's our foundation of what we believe in. Our foundation of our faith is prophecy. And it's constantly unfolding. Like this store right here. Oh, uh, we was here 10 years ago. This store right here, this place was this whole place was barren. This was, it wasn't really nothing even in this building. We was here 10 years ago. And guess what? What we spoke about 10 years ago is happening today. But hey, if the Lord blinded you, he just he, he, he ain't dealing with you, man. So these, these people, they really, they really, they have no clue. Downtown already know, man. Sushi eat. We've been down there first Friday. These people have no clue. When first Friday was crazy down here, we used to be right down there at Sushi Eat in the midst of it all. Come on, we had people pull knives on us, try to call the police on us, all of that. Man, y'all, y'all, there's no fear of man, bro. Especially when you, when you know the Lord control life and death, you don't have no fear of man. And once you know, man, listen here, you think about it. Yo, I had no say so the day I was born. So you know there's a higher power than you, man. That humbles you. But the Lord can take me any day, man. Let me let me buckle down and hey, what your boy Christian Lamar say? It's me humble, all right? Let me humble down. Because pride go up before destruction, man. You know, the Lord, even the scripture said pride wasn't made for man. There's no way to have pride inside of you, man, when it, every breath in your body is given to you. No way. No way. Anyhow, go ahead now. Sarah 39. Sarah 39 and 1. But he that gives his mind to the law of the most high. Yes, we will. So Rock 39 and 1. But he that gives his mind to the law of the most high is occupied in the meditation thereof, will seek out the meta wisdom of all ancient and occupied in the prophecy. Right. And we'll be occupied in prophecy, man. Be in Revelation 19 and 10. So he that giveth his mind to the Lord, it says that you will meditate on the ancients thereof, which is the scriptures. And your mind will be occupied in prophecy. That's why you have people flocking to these churches because they're not telling them the prophecy. That's why the Lord said, "Follow not a multitude to do evil," because they're doing it. They're speaking prosperity doctrine in churches. We're only speaking the prophecy. And even when you go to the Book of Ezekiel, He said when He opened the book, it was full of lamentations, mournings, and woe. So what does that tell you? What's up ahead? Lamentations, warning, and woe. Like you say, we're just spiritual or Doppler nine. We're just telling you this is the calm before the storm. So this is really a this is really love from the Lord letting you know what's happening. So that when it does come, you can't say you didn't know. You hear what I'm saying? Like the Lord said, it said by the it's it clearly said by the foolishness of preaching to save those that do believe. So majority of people that walk by don't believe. So what what does that mean? When the Lord said the slain of the Lord shall be many, well, you can expect that. You can expect that because not many believe, so you can expect many to not make it. It's, it's only it's only when you when, like when you read the scriptures, you be like, man, how can God kill? How can God? Then you look at the people like they don't care about the Lord. I don't look worried about them, man. They they high and mighty, man. I, I now I see why the Lord took them out. You know, so you start to you start to come to the sense like, man, now I see why the Lord is so stern. Now I see why the Lord is so so austere about keeping the commandments and doing certain things. Because when you don't look at the world today. Look at the look at the world today. And only the wicked like the society because they you wanna know why they don't have to do the things of the Lord, they can do whatever they want. What's thy will? America has the um the law of Thelma. It's like as in Rome, do as in Rome. There was no law there. It was it was just a debauchery state. Constantly. Anyhow, go back to uh, Revelation 19 and 10. Yeah. This is Revelation 19 and 10. And I fell at his, at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, Thou see, do it not. I am thy fellow servant. Right. So, so the angel was telling him, Don't bow down at my feet. The angel is telling John, Don't bow at my feet. I'm your fellow servant. So, with that being said, an angel is a servant just like we're a servant. The word angel just means messenger. So, we're messengers too. Go ahead. Huh? And of thy brethren, that I have the testimony of the Mashiach. Worship God for the testimony of Mashiach is the spirit of prophecy. Right, so the testimony of the Lord is prophecy. So when I see these people in the church sweating out their jerry curl, jumping up and down, dancing, hooting and hollering, everybody got their hands in the air. Oh, I feel it. The spirit is on me. Oh, no, them demons on you. But the Lord said the testimony of him is prophecy. What testimony are you talking about? That's not prophetic what you're talking about, <laughs> right? So what spirit do you have on you then? It ain't prophecy, but it said the spirit of the Lord 
It's the testimony of prophecy. These in these in these pastors inside these churches, they got a 501c3 charter. It's called a gag order. So, in other words, it's just like the educational system. The government is going to give you a curriculum to teach the students, like the government give the pastor to teach the people to feed the people. Come on, man, wake up, wake up. You wicked scribe and Pharisees would be the 501c3 one charters today. That they're for the government, right? That's why people believe it because it's lies. Keep giving them sweet, beautiful, juicy, succulent, delicious lies, and they'll eat it up. Giving them bitter herbs, they'll push it away. But, but that's what's good for you, right? Anyhow, read that one more time. Up. Revelation 19 and 10. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am the fellow servant and thy brethren, that I, the Lord testimony of Mashiach, worship your how for the testimony. The Mashiach is a spirit of prophecy. And you give me first Corinthians 14 to 1 by yeah. prophecy, man. Everything's based upon prophecy. And that's what, and like I said, the foundation of our faith is prophecy. So we can see it, man. That's the beautiful thing about it. When we couldn't see it, it was even it's crazy. Because faith is something that you can't see, but you believe in, right? When we couldn't see it, we were just more all this. We just excited because we're like, man, I mean, I can see the sign. Now, when you actually see it. You can see the people get more quiet, but like you're more vamped up because now, man, this word is all the more true. Like, damn, I can't believe it. Like what the elder said 30 years ago, what the elder said 20 years ago, what the elder said 10 years ago, five years ago, two years ago, all that's coming to pass. And you sit here, you'd be like, man, this is real. But it's a beautiful, it's just like, it's a sense of, it's a beautiful nightmare uh -huh. because you at least have a chance at salvation, but you know it's going to be hell to come. But even the scripture says in Acts the 14th chapter, it said, matter of fact, let's get that. So like, no, wait, no, no, you, no, you do that. I'll get it. I'll get it. Yeah, you've been, you've been, you've been talking about it. Slacking, but yeah, even in Acts it says it's not gonna be a, it's not gonna be a cakewalk going to the kingdom of heaven, man. I don't, I don't get it. Like the Lord was crucified. And like it says, humility comes before honor. He was humiliated before he was honored. You people think you're gonna just walk to the kingdom of heaven with honors and not go through no humiliation? Not go through, not carry your cross. Even the Lord said, He do not do he who did not bear his cross is not worthy for the kingdom of heaven. So what life is you living? You think you're just gonna waltz into the kingdom of heaven? You're not. There are there are trials and tribulations, man, that go for you to be tried. Because it says wisdom will try you. To gain something so precious, you gotta be tried. Constantly tried, man. That's why everybody I, I said it earlier at the beginning of this um of this line. Everybody can be a millionaire because everybody don't know what it takes to do to take sacrifices, man. You gotta make sacrifices to do certain things in life, man. Some people sacrifice time. It's like some people they just had to let go out of their life, like us. People in the world that we grew up with that I would go to war for right now. I can't even like we ain't on the same frequency right now. But in in the street, you, you see me walking the camp. What the dude did? What the dude did? He saw me. He walked on TV and gave me down. He know me from the hood, but he see me with my Bible. He see me, with, you know. Yeah, I know. I know what you used to be, but I know who you are right now. What's up, bro? That's what keep moving. That's it, man. Because at, at the end of the day, when you look at when you look at the world and, and what what's left, what's left? Here? If you want to have a family with a traditional woman, good luck. You know, try to go to the Middle East. Well, it pushes democracy over there. So it's like if you try to get a peace of mind in society, man, our only peace of mind we got is here. Because everybody, the majority of people really don't know where the world is going. We know, we're telling you, but it's not it's not in the direction that you wanted to go. But that's our only purpose of being out here, man. We're not out here to befriend you. We're not looking for subscriptions. We ain't no memberships or none of that, man. We are out of the fear of the Lord. Point blank, period. Hey, what the Lord said, the Lord said a thousand shall drop, a, a thousand shall fall like the wayside, but the evil shall not come near you. I expect that because thousands walk and drive by all the time. That's the thousand you talk, they he's talking about. It's crazy. The Lord said he's gonna show mercy unto thousands. There's billions on earth. Make that make sense, man. I'm talking about mass death. That's genocide, bro. It's like pandemic numbers. Like you don't like it's crazy, bro. You think about it. Flood the earth, save eight people. And how many people on the earth died? Man? That, that people don't think about that. He's God is all love. That wasn't love when he drowned the other people in the world. You know what happened when it was Sodom and Gomorrah? Fire and brimstone, right? 
What happened when King David committed adultery? Took his child. That's the worst feeling. That's the worst thing. I committed sin, but the Lord not going to punish me. Punish my son who nothing I can do for. It. That's what the Lord is going to do when he like. The Lord is going to. The Lord is going to choose your delusion. He even said that in the Bible. The Lord said He's going to choose your delusion. So the Lord know what, what um what you're fearful of. Arachnophobia. You are afraid of spiders? The Lord will have it to you. See a whole bunch of spiders climbing up a wall. You just panic. Yeah, the Lord knows. What do you think happened in Egypt? There were apparitions. Man, man was going. Out. It's going to be hell that's going to come here, man. Now, let me get that real quick. This is Acts chapter fourteen, verse verse twenty-two, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith, and that we through much tribulation get to the kingdom of God. So, what does that mean? Much tribulation is coming to the world. Don't blame here. Much. This is just a minor scale, man. All right. Every hurricane don't start as a hurricane five a F, or a tornado as an F five. No, it has to progress. And right now, this is just a tropical storm, people. It's just a tropical storm. All right. It's, it's, it, the Lord just cut the oven on and it's heating up. The Lord's gonna get cooking, man. The Lord gonna start sending all these death angels out here. The Lord gonna start taking a lot of people off the face of the earth. And then you go hear the same sob story. Oh, he was a good boy. Oh, she had a bright future. Oh, she wanted to be a dentist. And the Lord don't care about none of that. Because you the Lord, the Lord ain't tell you to go be a dentist. Man, that's your lot, but I'm saying the Lord serve me. Matter of fact, can you get on Ecclesiastes 12 and 13? Let's see what the whole duty of man is. All right, that's mankind in general. You see what the whole duty of man is, you know what I'm saying? Be a fashion designer. I want to I want to be a Balenciaga, Balenciaga, whatever it is, a fashion designer. And the Lord ain't looking at that shit and saying, what's your job, son? Ecclesiastes 12 and 13, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear your heart and keep his commandments. Fear the Lord and keep his commandments. For, his, for this is no, the whole no, no, duty of man. That's the whole duty of man. Fear the Lord to keep his commandments, right? But remember, what's what's the transgression of the law? That's sin. What's the wages of sin? Death. I'm just a messenger, man. I'm just a messenger. So just hey, even the scripture say uh, America's this iniquity too, man. Right? Right? America's one big iniquity bowl. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you, you listen to what you just said. You said America is one big bowl of iniquity. Well, go back to Revelation when it says. The whore that rises upon the beast that has the golden cup full of abominations. That's a miracle. The golden cup full of abominations. Right there. Melting pot. Cesspool. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, that's what it says right there in the scriptures, man. This is this is the this is the place of this is the place. Matter of fact, another another prime example of way of, of, of showing that. Um, I think was it Meyer? I think it was Meyer M. Shaw. Meyer M. Shaw Bauer. Meyer M. Shaw Bauer. He said, "Give me control of a nation's money, and I care not who make the laws." That right there shows you that's the state of America. They don't care about what you believe in, as long as we can make a profit off of anything you believe or anything you want. That's fine. That's exactly what Maya M. Show Bible said. Give me control of a nation's money. I cannot who create the laws. That's why people, you know, they don't care. Oh, you want to you want to be a goldfish? You identify as a goldfish. They're gonna profit off of that. They don't care. <laughs> they would rather the masses die off so they can have less people to feed. They call you useless eaters, you know. That's what the oligarchs look at the other people as. If you're not from our lineage, if you're not, if you're not a part of our our in crowd, all right, if you're not. If you're not going to, towards our forte, they look at you as an outsider. They look at you as an outcast. They look at you as a foreigner, an alien. Because their whole task is, is to reduce the world population. They said that. That's why they took down the Georgia Guidestone. Remember, it says to put humanity in perpetual harmony with nature by reducing the world population of 500 million people. Bro, they had that. They had that in Georgia. Reduced the world population to 500 people, then they took it down. What's the quickest way of doing that? I don't know. Food. I don't know. Vaccines. 
viruses. Well, well really, people just kill themselves after they died alone, so they ain't even worried about that. Life expectancy just dropped. I saw an article. Life expectancy dropped in the past 10 years by three years. So rather than you dying at 79, you're dying at 76. Bravo, America. Sad, bro. Crazy. That's why the Lord said you got to shorten the days unless no flesh will be saved. No. Anyhow, let's get back to it. Oh, can you give me um can you give me um second Ezra 9 and 13? We're gonna close out soon. Second Ezra 9 and 13. <clears throat> this is second Ezra 9 and 13, and therefore be thou not curious how the ungodly shall be punished. And then, but inquire how the righteous shall be saved. So it's like, the Lord said, no, don't worry about how the ungodly going to be punished. Be more concerned with how the righteous shall be saved. Because that's a small number. That's a small number. That's what matters the most, right? Because a lot of people won't even make it in the credits in the end. <laughs> a lot of people, they're not even they're not even in the credits. A lot of people walk around like NPCs, you know? What's up, man? Sir, I don't want to get in the way about your shit. Oh, okay, all right. He's walking up on us. We you know what's going on, man. All right. I'm a lumberjack, my guy. Okay, anyhow, go back. Second edge is 9 to 13 again. And therefore, be thou not curious how the ungodly shall be punished. And when and when but inquire how the, the righteous shall be saved. But inquire how the righteous shall be saved. The Lord saying, quiet how the righteous shall be saved. So that's the only reason why we out here, man. For the righteous to be saved. Hey, for the Lord to ask a question in the scripture. When he come back on earth, shall that be faith on earth? That goes to show you that not many people are going to have it. So many people are going to perish. What it say? You shall be saved by grace and faith, which is a gift that's given to you. Right? It's kind of like <laughs> how, how, these, how these modern women say she want to get married, right? When she married herself. You can't gift yourself marriage. No, it has to be given to you, right? So a gift is something that's given to you that you earn. So, no, let me take that back because I won't even say it's earned because how did, how did we earn it? You know, how did we earn faith? You want to think about it. But then again, what it says, it's been with the faithful since the womb. So we're the same ones back then. And that's reincarnation, right? Because what, because what did the Lord, not the Lord, what did the angel tell John the Revelator? He said, thou shalt prophesy again amongst many nations. And there was no other history of him on prophesying again other than it will be today. Because there's no recollection of the past like it says in Ecclesiastes, the first chapter. All right? So go ahead, read it again. Second Ezra 9 and 13. And therefore be not thou not curious of how the ungodly shall be punished. And when but, but inquire how the righteous shall be saved. Right. Who the world is who the world is and for whom the world is created right so mm -hmm. inquire about how the righteous shall be saved for whom the world is and whom the world is created so at the end of the day like i said yeah there's prophecy yeah we speak about we're heavy on prophecy because that's that's what it's all about you know but like what's happening in israel right now that's also biblical prophecy but that's not that's not gonna start there's not gonna be no nukes lunch stall until they actually fully implement to try to fully implement everyone and get the MOTV under their right hand or in their forehead. So as of right now, what's happening in Israel, that's just the Lord showing his hand. That's like, it's pretty much the Lord making a chess move, showing you that, yo, I, I'm stirring up everyone on earth. I'm going to stir everything up. It's crazy, though, how the Lord had three earthquakes set in within the span of 24 hours on three different continents. Then you had the bombing in Israel, all the nations coming down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. You know what I'm saying? You got you got people out here saying that the Lord got many names. I mean, there's there's so much, there's so much going on in the spirit that we gotta constantly be in defense of, man. You know, so it's much more than just coming out here preaching. We also gotta live and we also gotta be in defense of the gospel. But remember, this discipline requires you to be at your absolute best when no one's watching. Right, everybody want to watch the championship, but she wasn't with me in the gym making free throws. So, with that being said, we're gonna give all honor, glory, and praises to Yahweh by Shem Yahushai by Shem Kadash.
Don't want to sign elders like Great Millstone calls the truth. Sing the arms to the elect. Peace and blessing to the one third. And peace and blessing to the confusion of faces of the four corners of the earth. Walk up the ball, show the walls. That's right.